So the, the orbital insertion that I have here sets us up for a counterclockwise orbit because uh, like, that's what we have with our space station. Pretty much everything I have goes counterclockwise. Like if you're looking from the North Pole down on the moon or if you're looking on the North Pole down from, you know, Kerbin, like everything goes counterclockwise, which is the traditional way that the orbits go. You could actually set them up to go clockwise. You would just have to reverse the launch procedure of what's normal. Okay, so in any event, let's set the Mun International Space Station as our target, all right? So we are on approach. We do not yet have orbit with the Puddle Jumper 2. Um, the space station is in orbit at 300,000 meters. It is circularized, so when you look at it, it's a circle. It's not an oval, it's not stretched out. It's as circular as possible. Periapsis is 298,000 meters. Apoapsis, the captioning needs to say the apogee, I guess, is 303,000. It's it's about 5,000 meters off, but it's circular for all intents and purposes. Um, so what I want to do is I want to set up a maneuver to enter into orbit with the puddle jumper. So we just pull that retrograde. So you see how this is like elliptical at the moment? That's what I mean. So that's an, that's the oval. We want it to be circularized when we're matching up with the uh, with the space station. Um, also, in case you didn't know, this is something I learned about halfway through last year after playing this game for years. When you're doing your maneuver nodes, you can hold your mouse over the maneuver that you want to do, so like retrograde or prograde, and then roll the mouse wheel. And it gives you much finer control um, and adjustment for those maneuvers. To the mothership in Kerbin orbit, one is facing up so I can make it easier. So I should be using docking mode at all times, and every time I try to fly back to the mothership, I just fly past it. And I do make it as a target. Okay. So when we get close to um, the intersect here, I'll show you what we can do about that. Um, yeah. So give me a minute to get set up for. All right. Good night, Starlet Creations. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you again. Um, where was I? Okay. Meeting up with the Mun International Space Station. We haven't achieved orbit yet, so we're not quite to the stage where I'm, I'm going to demonstrate for you what you can do. However, I do want to adjust. Oh, look at that. We can come right in on this orbit, intersect, lined up pretty well there. Um, I'm going to do some minor adjustments. So it's showing closest approach of 3.7, 3.8. Yeah, it keeps going back up. So 3.7. Our relative speed is 22.4 meters per second. Now our inclination is off. <clears throat> Excuse me, by half a degree. Um, we'll do that adjustment when we get to the the ascending node. And that'll pro whoa, whoa. What just happened? Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that was a weird skip. Um, and then that'll probably close this gap. Yeah, see, it's just a vertical gap. Like, the, the space station is going to be above uh, the puddle jumper when they get to this particular location. Okay. So that's all. That's fine and dandy. Let's do the time warp, because I'm not waiting an hour and a half to get to that maneuver. Whoa, what are we following here, guys? This is so weird. <laughs> We're like zipping around. Okay, this maneuver is coming up. It's a retrograde maneuver because we need to form orbit so we don't fly past the MUN. All sides of the small ship. Okay. RCS, Reaction Control System, is what that is. Okay, so our maneuver indicator is the blue one. Our inertial indicator is the yellow one, and this is the retrograde inertial indicator. So if you have control with a pilot, it'll be here. If you have an advanced enough uh, probe on it, this will also be on here. It'll be retrograde. That burn's coming up in three, two, one, ignition. 
14 second burn time. Fuel's looking good. Electrical is good. Preparing to shut off the engine in three, two, one. Engine off. Clear the maneuver node. Okay, so we have some slippage. That's fine. I'm gonna enable RCS, so keep your eye on the nav ball. You see that RCS, I'm gonna make it blink. So it's on, and then I just need to adjust slightly, just barely tap in the RCS system forwards and backwards to get... Okay, it looks like closest approach, so if you look there, you can see it looks like 3.6 kilometers. So this is, this is what we would call like the synchronization. We're matching up the orbit with the space station so that we meet it on the orbit. We're 3.6 kilometers apart, we're 22.6 meters per second relative speed. That's what people commonly refer to as the delta V. That's the change in velocity between the two, the difference in velocity. Now, because of the timing and everything that we came in, um, we are keeping our orbit larger than the space station. So the space station is ahead of us, or it's behind us. Yeah, it's behind us. There. And we're over here. So we have to have a larger orbit. Think of it as like a racetrack. The bigger the racetrack, the longer it takes to run around the outside of it. The inside of the racetrack, which is where the space station is, is a shorter distance. So if you need the space station or the other spaceship to catch up to you, you need to have a larger orbit than your target. If the, tar if the spaceship or the space station is ahead of you and you need to catch up to that, then you need to have the smaller orbit. And then the space station or the target needs to have the larger orbit in that case. So in this case, space station is behind us. We need the bigger orbit so that it can catch up to us. It doesn't have to travel as far because of the larger orbit. So with that in mind, let's zippity doo da and time warp around to the other side so you can see the docking procedure. Even though the separation is 3.6 kilometers, like that's, once you, get practice and learn how to do this. That's like, oops, let's turn off RCS. 3.6 kilometers is nothing. It's like, psh, you'll be doing this all day long inside and out. No problem. Um, oh, I forgot to adjust inclination. Oh well, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna zip a little bit closer because it's still six minutes out, five minutes, four, three, Okay, so we know, so you want to remember these numbers, 3.6 kilometers, that's the closest that we're going to get without making any adjustments. And then 22.6 meters per second uh, relative speed, the delta V. But we're not going to let that happen. We're going to fix that en route. So that's where we go back to this view. We're not going to use the tracking station anymore. We're going to stay in this view until we dock. Because we can. Okay, so... Now that you're here, you want to cycle your stabilization, right? You want to make sure on your nav ball that it says target. So look over there. Remember, keep your eyes on the ball, just like baseball. And you want to be on target. And then you want to hit the retrograde because you're approaching the space station or the spaceship at 22.6 meters per second. You're going to have to slow down and stop when you meet up with it. Um, and then it also helps to look for the ship or the station, no matter the size. <laughs> you need to find the brackets in the sky, which if I remember from what we were talking about, it's below us. So it should be down here somewhere. I'm just looking for it in the sky. I don't see it for whatever reason. Um, and this is important because I need to know how far away if I'm, or is it above us? Oh, it is above us. We're below the space station, that's right. <laughs> uh, so we wanna see this bracket. So when it gets close to that number that we saw, the 3.6 kilometers, um, we actually wanna start burning prior to that because you know the difference is 22 kilometers or 22 meters per second. Um, that's actually not a lot. So I'm gonna thrust limit this about 50%. Wow, I hit 50 right on the spot. Um, and then at four kilometers is when I'm gonna fire up my engine because 22 meters per second, it's pretty fast. You're gonna need to um, 
slow yourself down quite a bit. And it's going to take some time. Just like in a car, you know, when you hit the brakes, you don't stop right away. It takes you a little bit of distance to stop. So you have to bear that in mind when you're approaching the other ship or the station. So we're four kilometers away from our target. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the engine. And we want to get this target velocity down to zero. Um, we're still four kilometers away. <laughs> I'm going to wait because you saw like the engine was, we were slowing down really fast. I'm going to take off even more, drop this down to 10% engine. Newton's first law. <clears throat> what is Newton's third first law? Oh, opposite action reaction stuff. I always forget. It's what's in motion stays in motion until acted upon by a equal or larger opposing force. Okay, we're 3.8 kilometers. Um, it's taken a minute to get there. Because 3.6 is the closest we're going to get to the space station. Or in this case, we'll just call it the target. 3.8 is the closest we're getting to the target. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fire up my engine again because we want our target relative speed to be 0, 0.0. So we're effectively going to, like, relative to the target, we will be stopped. Like, we'll be just hanging out. It's over there. We're over here. We're not moving towards or away from each other. So we get that to zero. Oh, that's pretty close. Um, and now, I don't know if you noticed, but I turned my spaceship. I know that on this spacecraft, these red indicators with the crew hatches and everything, that's the top of my spaceship, right? So I know that I can pull up and it's gonna move that direction. Or if I turn left or right, I know it's gonna turn left or right. Oops, oh, don't overshoot. Uh, and then you wanna look for your purple indicator. Remember, you're only going to see that if you have this on target, on your nav ball. So, relative to the target, we're basically not moving. So, line up your target indicator with your nose. Lock that in with stabilization. Hit your engine. It's still three kilometers away, so I'm going to go like 10 meters per second. All right. Work my way up there and just discover I'm going too fast. Yeah, okay. You'll see that shortly. I'm still getting to the station. I'm still getting to the target. So whatever spaceship you have, um, this is gonna, it's gonna be just as valid. We're just not quite there yet. All right. So the inertial indicator is the yellow one. The purple indicator, it's kind of a fuchsia color, but we'll call it purple. Um, those are all lined up with our nose. We're heading right at the space station right now. I'm going to fast, I'm going to do a time warp here because three kilometers at 10 meters per second is 300 seconds and that's forever in a day. All right, slow down, that's 1,000 meters. All right, we are on approach. You'll notice there's been a bit of slippage with the inertial indicator. So that means relative to the target, we're actually going to slide to the left and slightly up. So that is kind of related to the issue that it sounds like you're having too, where you're going too fast. In this case, we're going too fast to the left, right? So the motion of your spacecraft is a combination of vectors. Going forward is a vector, left and right, up and down are also vectors. And it's usually a combination of those. So if you have mostly forward and a little bit of left, it looks like this. If you have a lot of left, it looks like this and a lot of forward looks like this, so you would actually be making a straight 45 degree off. So when you overshoot, it's because you have too much of something. I'm going to flip around right now because I need to use the main engine to slow down. So we're getting ready to fly past because we're going too fast. We're at 10 meters per second. So I'm going to turn retrograde. Just click the target. Hopefully you have a pilot or a smart computer that will do that. Or you can manually do it this way as well. Just turn it towards the retrograde indicator, right? Because otherwise we're going to fly past going too fast at 10 meters per second. So you fire up your engine. You bring that target velocity to 0, 0.0. And you might need to just inch the throttle along until it gets to 0, 0.0. All right. Boom. And then, so right now you see this purple indicator on the nav ball? 
that's retrograde to the target. You want to turn your spacecraft back prograde to the target. And since you're relatively speaking, you're not moving, you're just both hanging out in space, just kind of floating there next to each other. And then you can go towards your target again. Only this time, don't go so fast. <laughs> Use your RCS. So we'll lock in, make sure that our nose is on the dot with the target indicator, right? And yeah, if you want to use RCS, so you enable your RCS, and then you push towards it, and then you just watch your velocity, right? We're going to half meter, we get to one meter per second, for example. Don't go any faster. <laughs> Bob, is, when you finally get docked, yeah. Um, and so relatively speaking, like you're under the ship, or you're over the ship, or you're next to the ship, like right now, oh, look at this. There's the moon, there's the sun, here's the puddle jumper, up above us is the station, the target, like your other ship. This just managed to work out. This is kind of what your situation is, right? You're going up to the station. But relatively speaking, when you get your target velocity to 0, 0.0, like you're both just hanging out, you're just floating there. So it doesn't matter if you're above or below, or in front of or behind or left or right, like you're now just you're both stopped relative to each other. You're both zipping around the moon or around Kerbin, but relative to each other, you've stopped. And at that point, you can then be like, okay, now I'm gonna go towards you, right? I'm gonna go towards you, I'm gonna go towards you, I'm gonna go towards you, either way. So we're going at the station at 1.1 meters per second. Um, I'm in a time warp because we were like 200 meters away and that would take three minutes to get there. Okay, so now we're here. I have not. Um, from what I hear, all the time warping stuff really messes with you. So it becomes difficult because you have to plan out with your partner, whoever is in multiplayer, like, okay, I need to time warp. Are you ready? Can you? Is it safe for me to time warp and stuff like that? So, and I make extensive use of time warp, like you just saw. Like I didn't want to wait 200 seconds to get there, so I just hit the time warp. Other people will throttle up, right? They don't mess with the time warp, but they throttle up, and then they end up overshooting, for example. And you can overshoot with time warp. Like if I forgot to drop back to real time at 1.1 meter per second at 10 or 50 times speed, yeah, you'll just zip right past your space station and be like, what? Okay, here we are. Um, let's set this docking port as the target. Now, if I did nothing, it doesn't matter what speed I'm going, whether it's 1.1 meters per second or 10 meters per second, yeah, I'm gonna sh overshoot the space station right now. Um, but I can go ahead, I'm gonna put my solar panels away. Quick, quick like a bunny, retract. Okay, so here I am going to stop. I'm gonna bring my target velocity to 0.0, .0 again. Um, and remember, keep your eye on the ball. So you see the target indicator, the purple, it's faded over here on the side of the ball, but it tells you which way you need to go, right? So I need to go left. So I can, actually, I need to go up because otherwise I'm gonna run into the space station. Yeah, I'm gonna run into the space station if I do that. Now that I'm stopped, so you, you get a sense, right? S the target's hanging out in space, my spaceship's hanging out in space. We're at 0.0, .0 meters per second. They're just right next to each other. Um, I'm actually going to disable RCS. I'm going to get myself, because humans tend to think like in very fixed dynamics, and using a navigational ball like this, it takes practice. I'll, I like you just have to learn it. You know, the brown is the ground, the blue is the sky. This line here is the artificial horizon, right? Right now we're pointed at the ground. If we were to like you know, rocket into the moon, that's what we would be seeing in terms of, you know, that's our trajectory. But in any event, I'm looking for this, this docking port, now that I've stopped at 0, 0.0. Oh, yeah, this was before I learned how to do that. I didn't have action groups back then. Um, all of my new stuff has action groups though, that's for sure. Okay, we're here. I know this way is up. This is like the spine of my spaceship. So I can, um, 
going to turn it and orient it a little better for docking. Um, I'm actually going to do a little bit more advanced docking maneuver than what you might do. I'm going to use this dock as the control. It's still very similar because um, you know which way is up and down, you know which way is forward and backwards, and it's all relative to the dock. So in this case, what we're looking at here, like you see the spine, that's relative to the dock, it's reverse, like I would hit back up. If I wanted to go forward, I would go forward, right? That's very different than using the command cupola or the dock that's on top here. But it's still left and right, up and down, forwards and backwards. I just rotated it 90 degrees for myself. Um, so I can translate over to the left here. Am I, how am I on my alignment this way? It looks pretty good. Um, so if you wanted to, you can aim the camera if you right-click on the dock. There is also the docking mode here. So this kind of gives you a sense of like pitch and forwards and backwards and stuff like that. And then also importantly, in lieu of the camera, keep your eye on the ball. <laughs> so you're going to see something um, pretty soon here that is effectively like the camera. So you're going to see the target indicator show up on this side of the nav ball, right? All right, I'm going to aim up my RCS. So you see it's coming down below the my indicator. So first of all, I want to stop that motion. And I want to hit caps lock to put me in micro thruster. So you see how it's drifting to the right. If I thrust, I can get it to stop drifting that direction. And then I need I know that I need to go down. So this is kind of like your camera view, right? Looking at the artificial horizon there on the dock, like on the nav ball, that's like looking out through the dock. And then I know like, oh, the docking port is actually down there because the nav ball tells me that it's down there. So I can hit the appropriate button and then I can also see it's off to the right a little bit. So I can go over here and get that lined up as I dock. Now, there's another thing that you'll notice and let me get this lined up real quick here. I'm gonna back away. See how the retrograde um, inertial indicator popped in there? You have to be going a certain speed in order to see the, the inertial indicators. If you're going too slow, you will not see the yellow inertial indicator. But what this inertial indicator tells me right now is I am moving directly straight back from the docking port because the target indicator and the inertial indicator are lined up, even though my docking port is not. This tells me, this is like my camera view, I can see that I'm moving straight back from the docking port. Now I can go forwards. So I'm gonna just hit my thrusters and go towards. And I can also see my inertial indicator. So you always wanna line up the inertial indicator with the target indicator, just like that. Disable your RCS, and then you can turn your craft and tilt it. Lock in stabilization. So everything's lined up there. I actually need to go a little bit up. It's all lined up. Like this is essentially my camera view. And if we look over here, we can see it's all lined up. It's gonna dock right in there. Left and right, up and down. Bam, just like that. And then you have a good dock. Whether it's a big spaceship, a little spaceship, a big space station, a little space station. Yeah, just like that. So the navigation ball is something you gotta get used to. It is your friend, absolutely 100%. And you wanna watch those speeds here where it currently says orbit. You wanna make sure it's on target. You want to check whether you're retrograde or prograde to your target. You want to watch those target speeds. 
to keep those in check so you don't fly past or over. And then watching where your inertial indicator is relative to the target indicator. Because if it's, you know, up and to the left, like you know you need to move your ship up and to the left, right? So you can hit the corresponding thrusters to do that. And here's the thing, if you don't know the orientation of your ship, because remember I said this is the spine of my ship, I know this way is up, always pay attention to the nav ball. That's what's going to be true all the time. You might be looking at your ship and you might think you know which way is left and right and up and down, but you may have missed something or you might be in a hurry. That happens to me constantly, or I'm in a hurry trying to, to do something and I'm looking at my ship and I get it backwards. The nav ball does not lie. <laughs> Watch your indicators, the, iner the yellow inertial indicator with the purple target indicator and then you know you know which way like if the yellow's over here and the purple's over here you know that you need to move left boom well for your view on the webcam like that's right but you know which way is left and right which way is up and down yeah and it's always on the nav ball so those are the biggest things those are the the most important aspects i would say of docking in any situation whether it's a space station or a spaceship and no matter the size um always watch that target velocity Always make sure your nav ball is on target, prograde, retrograde. Watch your inertial indicator relative to your target indicator. Um, it could if the game glitches, but I don't think I've ever seen that really ever happen. You know? Um, and here's the thing, it's like that in the real world too. So in an airplane, that's how a navigation, that's how the artificial horizon works. Sorry, my back. I hurt my back. So it hurts right now. And it's been a month. Over a month, actually. So, yeah, this this is very important. And learning how to use the nav ball in a spaceship versus on an airplane. On an airplane, it's a lot easier because normally you see the artificial horizon. You know? Um, whereas on a spacecraft, you're all over the place. You're seeing up, you're seeing down, left and right. Like if you were an acrobatic pilot in an, aircra in an aircraft, then yeah, you would see the nav ball go all over the place like we did just now with our docking. But um, yeah, even even when I was in flight school, I did not have to deal with this, with a navigation ball nearly as much as I do now in Kerbal Space Program. Like it's much more difficult and it's gonna take practice, like seeing how that goes. But um, yeah. So there's, that, that's what it is. I hope that helps you. Um, understanding, like just relatively, and it's a spatial thing, and that's why the nav ball helps out so much when you're doing that. And, um, you know, watching your target when you get in your tracking station, making sure you get your alignment and your inclination and your circularization of your orbits. You know, that's important for making a, a good dock and getting, you know, the intersect together so that they match up at the right you know, spot essentially, and get them close. Like if you're, you know, within a few kilometers, that's ideal. You don't want to be more than 10 kilometers away on an orbit when you're trying to dock, because then your relative speed is also going to be high and the fuel you're going to have to burn in order to get to your target is going to be pretty high as well. So give it a shot. Um, you know, once I go offline too, you can always come back and review the video on demand. Uh, it stays up uh, here on Twitch, you know, for whatever it is, 10, 14 days. And then I'm on every weekend, Saturday and Sunday in space, 9 o'clock Mountain Time. I dock a lot. <laughs> you can see my heavy fuel tanker is here, the moon lander is here, the rover rescue is here. In fact, I'm going to transfer crew from the puddle jumper to the lander. We're going to land on the moon. We're going to come back. We're going to dock transfer crew back to the puddle jumper, send the puddle jumper back to the Kerbin, like, yeah. Docking is a regular, like, I dock so much, it's it's kind of silly how many times I will dock spacecraft in just a single night. So good luck, may the force be with you, live long and prosper, you know, all that stuff. I'm glad I could help. And come back if you have more questions, absolutely. I'd love that.